Right everyone, we're back. So what we're going to do, start doing now, is start potting these heavy onions up. As you can see, uh, they really, really need going up. You know, these will be pot and They've been in here a long time now, and them showing like, you know, they need more food. So we're going to pot up. These are going to be in the final pots, which is these five liters five litre square so yeah right here's the mix so what we've done as you can see there's the mix it's half John Innes of half a clover potting and uh, we've added Nutramate and added some Chem Pack potting base the reason we've done that, added a bit more, is because we want these now to stay in these pots till at least maximum end of April, all depending on the weather. But hopefully mid to end of April. And uh, so we've done a 50-50 mix. So how I do my 50-50 mix is, is, that's a... This is a 5-inch pot, so... Three clover to three John Innes, then th three clover again to three John Innes to mix one of these trays up. Um, I ain't sure how many pots that'll do, but we'll just go through it anyway. And then we use chem pack potting. Let's put my pot out of the way. Chem pack potting. Basically, it converts peat into compost. But, uh, you know, it, it, it has got, like, a bit of feeding as well. So these will, uh, I mean, the MPK factor is 7.5, 3.6, and 5.2. So it has got a bit of feeding, not too much, but it has got a little bit of feeding, and it's got all your trace elements in as well. Just had a bit each time, so what we do, we have a this big level scoop, as you can see, big level scoop. And then we'll do do half, mix it in, do the other half. And then we use a full one of these, which is a 60 ml cup. And then 30 ml goes in, and then mix it in, and then another 30 ml goes in afterwards. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get our 5 litre pot. We're going to put some in the bottom. And you might think, wow... That's a big jump from a 2 litre to a 5 litre, as you can see. As you can see there, you know, there ain't going to be that much as you think, because that, that's going to be a full air, full area there where your roots are going to be, and there ain't going to be that much around it. There's a bit in the bottom, there's only about that much that much in the bottom and that will take it'll only take a couple of weeks and they'll be out but that's my last pot i don't like to go any more on that because you for me you start struggling even though they am pretty pot bound you start struggling to empty them out and then plant them in but uh yeah we'll get on and uh we'll have a bit of a rattle while we're doing it but yeah you must start Gaining your plants now into their final pots because what you have to think about is that it's when you're gonna when you're gonna plant out. Now you can plant out within any time in April, depends on where you are in the country. But when you pot on your, your crucial thing is that is when do you put them into the last pots? Well, you could have good weather in April. And then you can plant out early April. And if we still have frost like we did do before, you could plant out till nearly May. And you've got to decide when to pot on. What is your last final pot? But a five's always for me. Now more than a five. A lot of people will go into them uh, flower buckets 
Well, I think that's a bit big myself because, you know, you, you've got to handle them. You know, some people can do it without struggling, but uh, I think five litres is more than enough. And uh, we'll have a get a decent plant out of it. So, and that's what we're aiming for, is a nice decent plant. Right, we we'll give it a good tapping to get the compost settled. Right. Last fill it up. Don't forget, you always have to fill your two litre pot inside a compost as well. It just makes it easier to smooth round. Otherwise, you've got to keep grabbing it, see. So, we've made that now. We've got our indentation. A bit more mycorrhizal joint veg, as you can see there. Like I say, we ain't already nothing. We're going to show you what we're using. But uh, I might need to get another packet out soon. And it might be a different brand, so I have got another one of these. It's at home. But uh, we've got a different brand over here. It don't matter really. They're all, they're all pretty much there and thereabouts. It's just some have, you know, a bit more different things in them than others. All right, so we've got our bit there. All right, we'll start off with this one. The only thing we're uh, potting on onions, a bit of a pain and can be a little tricky because you try not to slap snap the flutes or the tubes or whatever the leaves whatever you want to call them as you can see that there is more than overdue and you'll see when it comes out of the pot i think we can all agree there that's a beautiful root system <laughs> but it's well overdue and it uh, well needs potting on I mean, they've started to go around two or three times over. But uh, as you can see, beautiful root system. Couldn't ask for better. Lovely and white. No browning. No showing of any root rot at all. But um, as we say, we can always help them, tease them out to help them to get into the new mix. I could probably guarantee that within a fortnight, maybe a week, and they'll be out again. So, because you've got a massive root system. And when you're doing this, you will break one or two off. It, it ain't nothing to worry about, really. Because that what they do when you break a root, it branches off. So there you go, cracking. Right. We'll plant it in the uh, position. Now, we'll try and get this as level as possible. And I try and get it square, so I'll have to twist the sticks round because I like the plant looking at me, like looking at me. So it, it it branches out like that, it's a bit like a leak. Right. These will take some time potting up. You know, try try not to rush it. Everything will get done before I go today. Everything I need a good watering. This pot, I'm starting to get a bit light, and everything's getting a bit on the little dry side, and you don't want that to happen because you want everything moist, just moist enough. So let's take all the dirt dead off. Right. Put a bit on the top as a cover. You've got to cover the roots. So you'll have a lot of surface roots as well, see, so have a lot of surface roots there. So we've got to cover them up because when we water we'll end up uh, showing them and the sun gets to them and then it'll brown them off and we don't want that at all so we give that a good firming in a bit like say a bit of firming not too hard but all, just enough all right make sure you leave a bit of a lip for your water 
Alright, we've got to change these sticks round. Or, uh, yeah, we'll change them round. Now, this is the fun part, or I should say, a pain in the arse part. I'm sorry if the angle on the camera is a bit awkward, it's just the space in the greenhouse at the moment is getting very small, and it'll be even smaller now when I potted these up into 5 litres. So we'll be on next to nothing space, to be honest. Alright, take these out, put them here. Push them in. And try not to go through the leaves like I do sometimes, because you get very frustrated. Because it's easy said than done. The trouble is with that, it's gone all the way through. Okay, now we don't. Right. Iron them up a touch. Because we will need a bit more height. And then we pot on. I just tend to trim the bit of dye back off. I think I get that because it's down to off the gas, you know, the bit of the fumes. But nevertheless, I'm okay. They'll get through it. Right now we've got to re-clip it all. And this is the fun part. Because while you're doing it, you got to try not to snap in it. And I think it's bloody awful when you snap them out. You've got a beautiful looking plant and then bang, you snap a tuber. Or you snap a leaf. And it looks horrible. I don't know how much you can do about it, but there we go. Because you want your plants to look good all the time, see? But the only trouble is, sometimes we get a bit heavy-handed. I even do it myself, so... I'm not sure I'm not on my own in that aspect. All right, there we go. Could probably do with three canes and... Probably um, three clip it. Probably would be the best bet. But uh, we'll see how this goes. Because now we'll have to re-clip them anyway. But... Uh, Well, I hope you like me making these videos, and I hope you like me to continue, you know. So all I'm trying to do is give somebody a hand, or for somebody to learn somewhat, or to learn myself, you know. Because you, you never finish learning, and it's you can never stop learning, because there's always something to learn. Like I say, you can always learn even if you already know it. So, because everybody's got a different way to do everything. And everybody's got their own method that we can learn from. Because everybody's got ideas. And then we can learn from other ideas and Put them into our own work and then our fleet works out for us too as you can see this what takes the time re-clipping if you have to you know sometimes you don't have to re-clip it depends on how, how it falls but for these ones we will have to i tend to like to bend the tubers down because it's the roof of the greenhouse and when the sun does come out, they start sweating. And that's what gives you the scorch on the leaves. All right, as you can see there, all right. Chop the bit of a dead end off. Tidy it up. As you can see.
There's no arm to him. I have this every year. Some year worse than others. Others they will get a lot of it. It all depends on it. It's what you really want is the sun. But just lightly, I bloody jinxed myself saying we were, we were having on here. And uh, what happened? It belted down the snow. Right, as you can see now, that's uh, an onion in a 5 litre pot, heavy onion. Well, hopefully heavy anyway. In a 50 50 mix of John Innes and Clover potting. It's looking beautiful, nice and clean. I haven't sprayed for a while either. But uh, they will definitely be getting a spray because it's well overdue and we want to keep these thrips at bay. But uh, hopefully there's none at the moment. But that, that's a beautiful onion. And uh, we're going to pot the rest up now and then we'll show you. I'll show you a few on each stage when we pot the leek, uh, pot leeks up, blanched leeks up, the quality onions up. Yeah, you know, they're all they're all ready for going up into the last pots now. Uh, the floor will be a mess until I clean it up, but there you go. Lovely onion, probably ready to go up. More than ready, as you can see, more than ready. So that they'll go into a two liter. They'll go into that pot. As you can see, it ain't as big as you think. It isn't as big as you think it is, but you know. They will settle in there, and that will, will give me plenty of time, give me a good onion. And, uh, yeah, you know, you, you, you call complain, really. So you get good onions, and that's what it's all about, trying to get the best out of your plants. Because you always, especially, you know, you, you're always looking for quality. Unless, for, you know, unless you like these heavy onions, you know, then you want the weight. But, uh you got to have a good bed. It's how you see in the greenhouse growing. you got to have a good bench, good trench, I should say. I mean, there we go. That's a Thurston. All ready to be potted on. But uh, looking nice. So beautiful. Right, we'll carry on and we'll, we'll show you on the next stage on where we are. And then, uh, then as we're going through. But here's a consolation. There's the chilies and peppers, heavies and long chilies. Okay, we'll knock it off here and we'll show you when we're doing anything next. Thank you very much. Right, as you can see, we're on the blanched lakes now. We've done all the heavy onions. Now the blanched lakes are going into a three litre deep rose pot. So again, Fill it up. So I'm going from this one litre. One litre pot. Going into a three litre rose. This is all they're going to be their final pots. So we're getting cracked on with it now. Getting our indentation again like we have it with all the other stuff. Now let's fill it in round it. Because we're getting plants now ready to, uh, you know, once I've filled this up, there should be no on near enough pot band and uh, all ready for the uh, the trenches, which is about a month or so away. And also, I've turned the eating down now. We was on number one. Now we're on zero because we've got to try and get the plants climatising down to try to get the plants to climatise down to the you know the weather these weather conditions. I mean it's still going to be different to what's outside, but you know it closes time. You know the eater well beyond very often. And it wasn't wore on that often anyway because we've had some bit of warm temperatures. But, you know, I've knocked it down a bit more so it'll only really come on now if it's frosty or so. 
as you can see lovely set of roofs just about ripe potting on that is it will like the onions overdone but uh yeah right we sit that in now like we said before we fan round all right you can see that, that that's a nine inch collar all right lift the clip up so push the cane in there we go clips up now all right we've got to lift the collar up a bit because we've got to take this old dead flag off always clean make sure you know so we're moving the collar up a bit now as john souls we showed you in his video you know there's different ways of collaring i mean you can put a full collar on which is some people's preferable way or you've got a collar nine inch and you move it up or you can make one six inch and just move it up as they go it's all your own preferable method this is the way i do it i think they all work is just the same it's just if you've got a full collar on it might blanch it a little bit better maybe a bit quicker because it's in full full length darkness all right as you can see there one blanch leak in its final pot looking quite good all right we'll do another one for you yeah everything's looking quite good at the moment weather wise is pretty okay just the rain rain on and off but never mind we'll carry on doing what we can trying to get a better schedule at the moment i'm well behind but hopefully we'll get there we'll get there bit of patience and that's another thing you know in going you must have patience because everything they'll always go the way you want it to and you want to control it to a certain point so you know nature does the rest for wheat whatever be will be as they say all right as you can see these are the rmg blanche leaks set these away the 12th of october which is an handful of time and uh we got them smaller than usual which is good you know we don't want them too big so once again lovely roots lovely white roots just about enough i'm happy there I like my greenhouse work, relaxing, peaceful, we get the radio on and move away. Do you rather radio on when you're in the greenhouse potting up or working on your allotment? Cool beat a bit of music, can you? Helps you to keep working. Serves you being in silence, don't it? Right, as you can see there, we just pull the old flag down. Take it off. There you go. Old flag. Chuck it in a bucket. Always have a rubbish bucket in your greenhouse. Keeps a mess to a minimum. And we just put a bit round the top. Always put a bit of fresh round the top. As I've said in other videos when we've potted on a bit. Always a bit of fresh. Right. And that's all the RMG potted up. should give them a bit of a water and them away really so 
we'll get cracked on and i'll show you when we we do a bit of the uh pot you know potting up of the pot leeks and then when we get round to the quality onions we'll uh, do it's all the same really all, all this process is the same it's just for the purpose of the video we're just making a, a video on potting up potting up blanched leeks heavy onions quality onions so everything's looking good and then once we're all potted up we'll show you around on on where we're at and what stages we're at right we're back on the pot leeks right i thought i'd show you a couple i've potted up most of the pot leeks now these are the last two but we're nicking buttons that's why i've left these two and that one's just fell right we're nicking these two down so we'll show you right as you can see the button's going a bit long this is a betty black cross joint so we'll remove this one all right throw it in the bin all right pull that one down pull this one down as it's split anyway all right as you see a betty black cross joint is the two legs are notorious for going long. Right. I hope you can see this. Right. Get your Stanley. Little one like that. Nice shot. Run it up. There. Right. Pull. Slowly. Right. Pull it down. As you can see, we've got another button. I'll try and do it closer. Right. Run your knife up. All right, and that's split the button. Now, a bit hard for me to do it here. See, I've just cracked it from there, but as long as you're steady, I'm okay. Right. Now I nick the buttons right back. Right back to the no button at all. Right. Looks a bit messy, but they'll recover. Right, we've got one more button. Run the knife up it again, just a little bit. All right, pull it apart. Slowly, slowly, slowly. All right, as you can see, I've had a touch of thrip. There, just a touch. All right, touch of thrip, thrip. Now that's basically not keeping on top of the sprain, which is my own fault. The moment you don't keep on top of your sprain, the moment the little buggers get in. Right, and you want to avoid that at all possible costs. I normally really got clean stuff, but we're just trying to keep on top of anything. Anyway, we'll lose all these flags anyway, because when the league grows, obviously in the trench, you'll lose them all, so it won't make too much difference. Right, as you can see, I'm pulling it apart. Right. So there's no button at all. He's got to recreate one now. Right. As you can see, there we go. Right, we've split them all down. And as you can see here, right, these flags. All these flags here, I should trim them back. As you can see, there. I think, oh, what are you doing that for? Well, these flags are long, and space is really tight in this green now, so it's that's why the camera is going to be a bit hard to do the filming as well. But like I said, here we go. Done them there. All right. Okay. Got them there. Okay, all ready. See, all nicked down. And that will recreate its own buttons now. And as we're going to pot it on, as you can see, lovely uh, 
root structure. Just a bit of raw for potting on. Tease them up. All right, there you go. Potted on as you normally would. Straight in the hole. All right. Firm it in. Firm the compost round it. Release some of the old stuff. Put it round the edges. And then we'll top it up with some fresh. Right. Top it up with some fresh stuff. So I'm always keeping that bit of fresh in all the time the surface roots and plus whatever bit of feed is in it will wash down to the bottom now we've got Betty black cross drying Nick down looking good one second we'll put the leak in its position okay I'll give it a drop of water I know you call see this but it's hard for me to keep moving the camera around, it's so tight in here now. Right, the last one. Put that there, it's going to fall over again. Alright, I'm going to pop this last one on, it's the last of the pot leaks now. And then I've only got the quality onions to do. And we're all potted up. Right, level it out, press it down, make your indentation again just to make it a bit easier for the bottom. Again, they again start to get moving now. Things are soon to be on us because it's towards the end of March and uh, we'll be starting tomatoes next week. I'll have to set the other benches up and we're setting flowers as well. We'll be showing you that. Right, there you go, got your indentation. Bit of mycorrhizal fungi. Scatter it in. Right, same again. As you can see, touch of three, but that'll all clean up. They have been sprayed since. All right, as you can see, pull that one down, pull that one down. It's good, gentle when you're doing it because uh, it's easy to snap it in between and it's hard to pull it down. Then, all right, we nick that one side, peel it down. All right, I'll show you again up close. All right, there you go. Run your sharp stand light up. Nice and gentle because it's easy to go through the other side. Don't matter if you do. Just makes it a bit that, that bit look untidy, but it'll be okay. All right. Pull that one down. Still got a button here. So what we'll do, we'll nick it again. All right. See, so you want to nick them down. Especially the leaks that go really long. Now you don't want to do this to Cumbrians or certain breeds of leak because they're a short leak. Alright. Have we got another one there? Yes, we have. We'll pull it right down until we see the next button. I mean, you could remove all these flags, but the leak's still feeding off you, as you could imagine. As you can hear that pop. I don't know whether you could hear that then, but you hear it pop. Right. So we've got two, 
Then remove the real bottom one, so you got two on each side. Right, pull them apart. As you can see, that'll go straight down now. Just do it on the giant and the Betty Black and things like that. That there, you know that a leak's going to go long for you. you. Want to try and keep it short as possible. And then what we're going to do is we just trim them. And you'll probably die back a bit quicker as well. There we go. Even them up. And plus, they can be a bit heavy and they might pull the plant to one side. See? So there you go. Lovely leak. Cut them off. We have. Pot it in its position. As you can see, just about right. Tease them roots up, ready into the next one. Push it in. Put the composting around it. Right, remember we've got to put a bit of fresh stuff on the top. Right. In our fresh stuff. Not too much though, because you've got to leave a lip for your water in. Right, press it down. Sort your leaves out, tidy it up a bit. And there we go, one Betty Black, another one cross joint, nick down, potted up, and then the final pot. Right, we'll come back when we're doing the quality onions, when I get down to the last few, then we'll show you an overall picture on how we're looking. Right, to finish the video off, now we're all in the last pots. As you can see, blanch leaks, all looking good. Heavy onions, looking reasonably well. It's a beautiful one. Hot leaks, all in the last pots. As you can see, blanch legs across the back, looking well. Some more pot legs. Chilies have come up well. I mean, the peppers and chilies all need potting on. Some more quality onions, all potted up. Last pots. Alright, as you can see, this is the full look of the old greenhouse. All looking well now. Once I've rooted, hopefully, the weather plays ball and we'll be able to plant them out. Thank you for watching, and like I said before, keep subscribing drop a like or drop a comment and thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one hello ladies and gentlemen well today we're going to do some seed sowing it's time to sow the exhibition tomatoes now as you can see vitax seed and modular bit of good stuff been raining all day today in the midlands well, the day for reference um, for the uh, sowing next more where what, what I normally tend to sow is on the thirty first of March, and uh, we're going to be sowing maize. So I think maize is probably your best one. There is one or two others. It depends on which variety. You can grow the best, but we're going to try and crack the tomatoes this year if we can. 
try and get a decent, hopefully we get a good place with them. And so, yeah, <coughs> we're going to do our compost. I'm going to mix in some farm vermiculite. As I've still got some. I've had this one for a few years now, so we will start getting it used it's very fine. As you can see, bought it from uh, Medwin was for a few years back, 100 litres, lasted me well actually, but uh, mix a bit in, make it um, <coughs> a nice mix. And I'll show you the seeds in a sec, as soon as we get it done. So let me know in the comments below on what you, you're sowing for exhibition. And if you're not sowing for exhibition, let me know what you're going to start sowing. I mean, it depends on where you are in the country. I mean, you can start sowing most things now. You know, the seasons start, really start to get going. Just could do a few better days. Keep bloody raining. Rain, rain, and more bloody rain. We want a, a day like we had a few days ago when the sun was out. And uh, it was lovely. Right, as you can see, nice for making all the compost. All right. What we're going to do this time, normally uh, I uh, sow straight into um, a seed tray, but this year I'm just thinking about popping them straight into cells. This is a 20 seed cell module tray, so I've got 20, 20 seeds, amazing. Hopefully we get 20, if not we, we won't. And the maximum at least 15 i mean i don't expect every every single one to germinate but we want at least 95 percent or so to come up i'm only growing like 10 or 12 plants so more than enough There's one or two other good varieties. I mean, you got the new one, Darmatress. I think it's gold. Um, so there's a few good varieties. There's a. I can't remember the word. There's Red Dragon. That's another good one. Um, what did I grow last year? I can't remember. But I am going to put some Cedrico in as well. This is our own save seed. And uh, the Cedrico, uh, Robert Reed's been selecting it for me. I gave him the seed originally. And uh, we've been reselecting. He's been reselecting the, the shape. And it, it's been coming on well. So hopefully we can get it close to what it used to be. With the yeah, Cedrico, but our main one's going to be Maisie from Select Seeds. Take a visit to Select Seeds. You know, Dave Thornton got some good stuff on there, both for the kitchen and for exhibition, and hopefully we get some good germination. Right, these will need a soaking, so we'll, I will be back in a second. Oh, we've come back now, and uh, it's all well soaked, as you can see. And what we're going to do, get your little dibber, 
can use anything really, but I've just got one of these. Uh, what should we do? Oh, it's make a little indentation. Not too deep, just deep enough. Hopefully we get 100%, but I doubt it. It's not very often. If we do, we do. It's a bonus. Right. Now, Maisie, tomorrow to see it. Open the packet. And we got another little packet inside. Oh, I ordered more seeds than I thought. I will do another try for the seed recon now. I thought I only ordered one. Never mind. One stuck in there, we'll get him out in a minute. Right. One seed in each. Right. Two. I go deep enough. You have to watch sometimes because it comes back out on your stick. Try to grab them. And we're going to get any extra seeds. Or we're we just going to get bang on the number. Looks like we might out. No, we're getting bang on the number. The last one's in the packet. All right, all in now. Cover over with a bit of compost. Now, do you define vermiculite over the top of this as well, or just the compost like I do? Right, I should really riddle it over, but it doesn't matter. I'll just take any lumps off if I see them. Alright, there we go, and then just scrape one side to the other. Alright, that one's done. Don't forget, label, label, date. Especially when you're showing. Day two, but if you're just going for the kitchen, always put the date. Because you can compare it, see, to other seasons. So, 31st of the 3rd. Maisie. Okay, there we go. Pop the seed label in. Wherever you want to. Okay, that one's done. I 
Oh, I'll continue to do them now. Yeah, I'm sure you get the basics of seed sowing. So, I'm sure you already know it anyway. So, yeah, that's the, tom uh, the maize tomato seed. And the only thing we've got left to do is some geraniums for the garden. Carpet mixed F1 from Kings. We get these put in, we're just going to wait for the seed tray to soak and we scatter them along the surface and a bit of compost on the top. Right, I thought I'd do a little seed sowing one for you. We'll see you again. 